for us it was obvious we had to solve the problem. If we had um, waited, we had nevertheless been punished by the markets because we were heavily indebted. And to um, abstain from reducing the deficit only means one thing. You will have the contraction from the monetary side instead. And then on top of that, the problem unsolved. So for me it was obvious. Go for a rapid response to the crisis. Uh, go for a comprehensive program. Uh, do it front-loaded. Start directly, because it's now you have the popular support, the crisis awareness. You can't, you can't miss that and you can't waste the crisis awareness. So therefore it was uh, quite easy for me to go for, for a quick start, a rapid reaction and a front-loaded program. And it worked. It's different cases, of course. Greece is one type of economy, UK another, and US a third type. Uh, Greece have lost their independence. They are now in a situation where others decide for them what to do. It's about the democracy itself. UK, they are doing it themselves. And I think they have a quite bold program. And I liked very much that they started with increasing the VAT because it was a signal about how serious the situation was. US, they don't have a crisis awareness yet. The most difficult thing now is, of course, the big European economies, UK, France, Spain, Italy. There we can't afford that they fail. Portugal, Ireland, Greece is something else. They are, after all, not big enough to destroy the whole project. We can contain them, so to say. But if Italy fails, that is a nightmare for every one of us. So therefore we have to have a more active European Central Bank to support them. And I think it's going in that direction just now. Not only survive, I think it will continue to grow. Because uh, the currency itself is a risk for small open economies. And uh, look what happened to Switzerland. Who thought that Switzerland would, could, should be the first country during 2011 to uh, go for a new regime? Not because the currency became too weak, it became too strong. And there are small open economies of the same kind in the northern part of Europe that also might end up in a situation where speculation against the currency just forces the government to go for a pegging of their, for instance, krona to the euro. So um, not only survive, I think that the euro will continue to grow. Then, of course, you will have an adjustment of the European economic policy, more of common economic policy, uh, start with a coordinated economic policy, and then at least the 17 inside the Eurogroup will have more of common economic fiscal policy. It's in their own interest, because the development is going uh, towards transparency in all respects. With new media, you can be sure about one thing, that it's not possible to hide anything in the future. And if you will mislead your electorate about the economic situation, you will be heavily punished. So um, I think that I'm optimistic that the development is going in the right direction. Transparency is a necessity for a successful politician in the future. That will also go hand in hand with quite a difficult decision in time because if you don't uh, take the right and difficult decisions you will be sure about one thing, you end up in a situation where you are not electable at all and that is a nightmare for a politician. Of course, we shall always discuss the rating institutes, what they are doing and uh, which type of, of, of driving forces they have. But to be honest, 
I haven't yet seen any case where they have been fundamentally wrong. And um, for us, when we were downgraded, it was a signal to go for a more active attitude. Today we have seen some European countries who have used the downgrading as some type of an excuse to attack others instead of dealing with their own problems. No, the institutes, the rating institutes, they uh, are alarm signals, signals that you should listen very carefully to.